Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today we're looking at this. This is a pressed glass undersea garden using our wonderful seahorses and our anemones to make this a very um, rich in movement piece. The pressed glass really makes you feel like you're under the water and everything is moving. So today I'm going to show you how to make this. So the first thing we need to do for the project is do our pressed background piece. I really love these, doing pressed backgrounds and then adding um, details with Marini afterwards. So um, I've cut some variegated, I don't often use um, streaky glass, not variegated, um, streaky glass, um, but I quite like this for this. Um, so I'm just going to kind of layer it up in quite ad hoc fashion, just using my favourite Bullseye Glass Tack Gel Glue. Love this stuff. Um, so I'm just getting these pieces in. They'll, they will squish together. So I don't have to worry too much about covering the whole areas. Um, it's a slight jigsaw puzzle, making sure that they're all in a space. I'm gonna add a few sort of rocks and stuff as well um, uh, afterwards. Additionally, and um, I then need to add some thing for the sea. So again, I'm going to put strips down I just love using transparent glass. I really, you know, I think it's amazing the colours and the feeling. Maybe it's because I loved stained glass windows as a child. So this sort of filling up areas and getting quite nice layer, layers on. Uh, I might just add a little bit more. I have um, it seems to be chosen the darkest piece to go at the top. I feel that um, that you should need a dark area. Um, if you're going to put dark, it's better to do it sort of at the top than at the bottom. I know in a way that's sort of not quite how the sea works, but it is going to work in this piece. Um, I just want to add a bit of darker up here and maybe even cut a piece to fit. Two layers on top, dark around, and then on top of that, I want to add some green stringers, which are like our kind of um, the the sort of sea grasses for our seahorses to sit in. Any of you scuba divers out there will know that. Seahorses like hanging out in seagrass because they wrap their tail around it to hold themselves secure. Um, I'm going to add quite a few of these, and some that are straight. You know, not as any that are straight. It's a wavy sea. All the seagrass is happily waving in the sea. Now some shorter ones. I'm going through my box of here and seeing what I can find. It's good to good to add. Going, you know, quite a lot here. It's going to be hard to balance the kiln shelf on top of this, I am aware, and I think it will probably break some of these getting the kiln shelf on it. Um, but I kind of like that. Now, the last thing I want to add is just some kind of. Uh, feel like rocks. I would like it if I'd had the, my, the um, extra large of this, but I don't have it at the moment. So I'm just going to 
생각. I'm going quickly, so. Yes. I'm making a mess. Oh, I'll sweep these pieces up at the end. So, this is now going to go in the kiln. It's going to be nicely squished flat. I have just noticed there's an area there which doesn't have any blue glass on it, so I'm just going to add another little piece behind. And it'll be all um, pressed nicely together. And we can see how it is after that and add our marine details. So once you've got put your piece in the kiln, um, I also put some deep red and some dusky um, violet uh, coarse frit on. You're then going to need to put a freshly kiln washed shelf on top. So the fresh kiln washed shelf goes on top, kiln washed down, and that goes in the kiln like that. And then um, this is what will press the glass. Now the stringers are going to make it slightly tricky to let it, let it um, sit but hopefully you just have to be careful, get it to sit on there gently and then it will all melt down and this will press it together. So here it is out of the kiln, nicely pressed. I love the effect you get, um, particularly with the red. I put some red frit and some purple frit on at the end just before it went in the kiln. And the pressing kind of gives that watery feel and I really love that effect um, for this piece to have that kind of feeling like it's in the water. It feels like, you know, that when you, look through water and you get a cold layer of water and a warm layer of water and it makes it go all kind of distorted and that's what i feel here so now i want to decorate it with my lovely products um this this project is all about seahorses so i'm going to put some seahorses on like they're kind of hanging out in the um the grasses um in fact actually i want to put although we've got these sort of wavy sea um wavy seahorses wavy uh, like grasses in the background. I want to just put some of these as our, for some of our floral stringers also on the tack fuse, just to give a bit more texture. Now, normally I wouldn't put them all the same way, but I sort of slightly feel that, you know, they're probably flowing in the in the current in the same sort of direction. And then it's, you know, almost putting your seahorse on it so that it's like its tail is wrapped around the grass, which I can't make it do on that one, but if we go like that. Now, most of our things are two-toned, so if I put it that way up, it's gonna look dark, and if I put it that way up, it's gonna look lighter. And I just need to choose which way up I'm putting it. I don't want to go crazy on these. I want space for other things. And in fact, I think I'm going to cut them off quite a bit and bring them, because I want an area at the bottom to put other things. So sometimes you need to do that with a piece. You go, oh, no, actually, I don't want it like that. Just a bit more like this. And I think when I put this in the kiln, I've got to decide, am I gonna frame it afterwards or do I want to hang it? I'm rather into this sort of hanging pieces at the moment. Um, and I need to decide if I'm going to do this as a hanging piece or as a... Or as, or to go in a frame or it could go in a stand. Um, Knowing me, I'll decide when it's in the kiln and then yell for Sandra to give me some hooks. Okay, so those are the grasses on. I'm going to add my seahorses, sort of like they're attached to the grass. So I'm hiding out in the grasses. Oh, I realise I'm putting them all facing the same way. I don't like them all facing the same way. That's another thing. I'm thinking about, do I want things facing the same way? Do I want them facing different ways? I don't need them all. And then I'm going to put some other things on. I want to put some anemones on. It's like clustering these together. So these are the sort of these flat anemones we have. And I like them kind of in the cluster. They're kind of, I feel them like anemone sea urchins. I'm working upside down, which I'm not always the best at. 
um, not thrilled with the colour of the glass here. It was a very um, a streaky and it's gone quite brown, so I'm happy to slightly cover up this area with some pretty marini. So I'm going to carry on decorating around this. I've got some gorgeous fishes to put on. The starfish, which I love. I love the vibrancy of the starfish, the bright red of them. I think really kind of um, brings projects like this out. But we're fantastic. We're going to have some little small kind of goldfish to go in projects that we're pulling tomorrow. And I decided mostly in the background I want to put these black and white batfish are going to be kind of the sort of the main fish with just a couple of other smaller other fish um so i'm going to carry on decorating i'm better off doing it the right way up and i'll show it to you before it goes in the kiln so here this is all nicely decorated i love the marini i've gone with this sort of you know um a more anemone feel a few fishes but um less tropical and more kind of um, anemones and uh, these sort of sea urchin and starfish type feel and, and kind of some reeds. I have decided to make this a hanging piece so I've got two little pieces of tector and these hooks which I'll put underneath when it goes in the kiln like that and they'll fuse in so that it can hang up. Um, it's kind of nice because it's got um, a lot of transparent glass and it will look pretty with sort of light coming in from the back. So this will go in the kiln now on a nice tack fuse and we can see how it is when it comes out. So here it is out of the kiln. I love how this turned out. I really, it's just, it completely reminds me of those sort of beautiful under the sea where you get such movement from the sea grasses just kind of flowing in the, um, in the, in the currents. And I just love it. You know, hold it up to the light, you get kind of light behind it and all this light coming. And the sort of, the way the glass, the blue glass pressed over the kind of dark glass in the background really makes you sort of, feel like you've got this depth in the piece that I absolutely adore. It's worth noting how I put the fishes on here. I'm going to put it back down. You know, clustering them together like they're in a little shoal really helps sort of make the piece feel more lifelike. And the same with the anemones. Um, they are actually placed in kind of little clusters. So a kind of cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here. I have a tendency of using threes. You've got three big seahorses, one, two, three, four, five kind of bigger fish. I like odd numbers, so you kind of see a lot of that in my um, pieces. Plus with the seagrasses, I kept some on this side and some on this and left an area open in the middle. I feel that kind of gives the, the whole piece a feeling of depth. Plus making sure that with the seagrasses that I had some of the light side up and some of the dark side up, again gives a feeling of texture and light. And even putting a, 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 a um, bit of seagrass over this fish also adds to the feeling of dimension. I really love how this has worked and I think it's really great and I think it would be a fantastic piece um, to sell in any shop or any market. I hope you've really enjoyed this and it's given you some inspiration about more undersea projects and if you like this video, please subscribe.